puberty blockers. So, uh, as we know, as, as you know, there's been a lot, of, um, a lot of discussion about trans over the last few years, about the whole phenomena, and of course, part of the whole transitioning that uh, trans do is, is uh, you know, part of the issue is that um, a lot of kids who feel like, think like they belong to a different sex, in order to transition them in some way, although you can't really transition yourself, but if, if, if it's only it's only of course a, a partial imitation of a transition, but you know it's never it never can be complete, just biologically it can never be complete. But part of that transition, to try to make it as complete as possible, is to prevent boys from being boys and girls from being girls during puberty. To block the hormones, to block the development of a girl's you know, uh, uh, breasts and female hormones and uh, ovulation and, 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 you know, to block those with puberty blockers. And uh, this has become common practice and it's been done on thousands of children in the United States and in England and in Europe. Uh, and part of the excuse given for this, or part of the reason given for this is that uh, you give, that these children are so depressed because they're in the wrong body kind of thing, that if you don't treat them when they're children, they will be super depressed and ultimately they'll commit suicide or they'll live horrible, miserable lives as teenagers. Didn't we all? And then by the time they want to transition, when they're 18, the transition is not as smooth because they now have all the hormones and they all have all the biological issues, right? So, um, uh, you know, and then there was a study out of the Netherlands, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, a small sample, but a study where they found uh, evidence that a group of young people who took the puberty blockers, who were super depressed beforehand, after the puberty blockers, they were super happy and undepressed and everything was cool. Now, a lot of questions have been raised about that study. And I talked about this when I talked about the CAS study. So in England, um, uh, because of just a phenomena of the, the, the dramatic increase in, in the number of uh, children transitioning and the number of children being treated with puberty blockers, uh, about a, few, a, a couple of years ago, and, the, and the, all the issues relating to that, a few years ago, um, a, 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 a pediatric specialist by the name of Cass, she was appointed to investigate and come up with a report uh, specifying uh, how this was all going. And, and I talked about this on a previous show, the Cass report, the Cass report is out, the Cass report basically says th that there's no real science behind puberty blockers, that they shouldn't be given. She strongly recommends against giving them, except in very, very, very rare cases, and she generally comes out against uh, treating very young people with, with medical treatments, surgery and puberty blockers until they're 18 and they can make their own decisions. Uh, again, with some exceptions in, in rare situations. And this report has caused the British government, because every, everything in medicine goes through the British government in England, to basically rein in this industry. Although the Labour Party now wants to reverse that, but to rein in uh, this, this phenomenon and to stop British hospitals, NHS hospitals, uh, from uh, engaging in uh, treating children with puberty blockers and surgery and, and gender transitioning surgery. Uh, but the cash report has not been received well in the United States, and there have been a number of uh, uh, people writing against it. Now, Um, now, there was, it turns out, a study done, um, a government-funded study, to figure out, well, what is the mental health impact of puberty blockers, of, of giving puberty blockers, and 
Uh, this was done uh, a few years ago. Uh, the, 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 uh, the study was funded by the government. Uh, and uh, they took, a, I think it was 70 or something, some certain number of young people and uh, who were gender distressed, they called them, uh, and who had, uh, who were, you know, had issues. And uh, they gave them puberty blockers. And then they later... Uh, they later analyzed, years later, they analyzed how they're doing from a mental perspective. And the results, the study's been done, the results have been analyzed, but not published. So, uh, you know, the report, the, 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 Study has never made it into publication. And in a story in the New York Times, again, the New York Times, and the New York Times kind of going kind of anti-woke, kind of interesting, interesting developments. In a story in the New York Times today, today, yeah, it's today, um, they asked the question to the doctor, why are the results never been published? And basically, the response is this. The results of the study are that adding puberty blockers did not have any material effect on the mental health of the recipients. It did not improve their mental health. Okay, well, but that's important, right? It's kind of consistent with the CAST report and contradicts the, the report for the, the study in Netherlands, and it would be good for doctors and everybody and parents and everybody else to know. But the doctor, who is one of the country's most vocal advocates of gender treatment and of puberty blockers, said that she didn't want to publish the study because she was concerned that it would be used in court and by the opponents of gender treatment to block the use of, you know, hormone blockers, puberty blockers. <laughs> so, I mean, let's see if we can get this straight, right? She's worried that if the truth got out, the truth would be used to stop providing an ineffectual treatment to kids, a treatment that is not necessarily reversible and it has lasting and permanent damage on these kids. <laughs> and she says this to the New York Times. The New York Times publishes it too, which is, again, surprising because the New York Times, for some reason lately, just the last few days, has, has had a series of these kind of, call them anti-woke stories. It's, it's interesting. Of course, other researchers like Outraged by this. Like, you're delaying the results. Results that have real impact on decisions families are making right now, all over the world, and could have profound, lifelong consequences to the health of their children. And you're delaying it because the results didn't come out the way you wanted them to come out? Because the results didn't confirm your particular biases? It truly is astounding and shocking and upsetting and everything else. It's, I don't know. <sighs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the state of the world. Facts ignored, evidence is ignored, reality is ignored. We just go with our wishes, our feelings, what we'd like, what, what we feel like, what is satisfying. To hell with reality, to hell with facts, to hell with science, to hell with medicine, and to hell with the health of our kids. We don't care about that. That's uninteresting.